I am Adewale Adewi, I'm a Nigerian, I'm an industrial chemist. Hello, my name is Abdeslam Badra and I'm a social scientist. Hi, I'm Clarissa Rios, I'm a scientist working in policy making. Hi, I'm Ibrahim Sid Zakari, assistant professor in statistics at Abdul Muni University. I'm Akihil Kishimula, uh, I'm a chemist. Hi, my name is Lisa and I'm a political philosopher. Hi, I'm Robert, I'm a philosopher of social science and a political scientist. Hi, my name is Shima Tahiri and I'm uh, working on developing smart self-healing concrete. Did you ever get stuck in a dead end and what did you do to get out of it? Yes, I remember so well when I was doing my PhD. The major uh, problem I had then was um, um, analysis of my samples. Um, there were no equipments in Nigeria to get them done then, so I had to apply for a research fellowship and all thanks to the World Academy of Science, which granted me a postgraduate study to go abroad to finish up my work. Yeah, usually we get stuck uh, because things don't work or because there is no funding. But what I do is to think about the, the end goal. And it's uh, to bring benefits for our community, benefits for our society, for creating a better world. And that's what motivates me to keep working and keep looking for solutions. I remember that in 2013, during my, my PhD, I faced the issue of uh, big data management with the assistance of technical, with the technical assistant, assistance of uh, external partner, we found solutions. When I did not obtain the reproducible results, we really worried about that situation. In that case, we had uh, uh, intense discussion with my students to, to review the experimental condition thoroughly and finally we got uh, some strategy to overcome that situation and also that that uh, kind of things led to the new findings it's a really yeah sometimes it was uh, finally it was, uh, was a really good situation to us oh there were many dead ends in my research because when you play around with ideas sometimes you realize that what you've just done is completely incoherent or inconsistent, illogical. And then you need to take a step back, think again, what are the premises of your arguments? Do they make sense? Maybe I have to look at a problem from a completely different angle and then usually I need to really step out of my researcher mood for a bit and do something else and then get back to a problem, think again and then hopefully find a new angle. Whenever I get stuck in a dead end, um, I will uh, first try to see if there is uh, any uh, previous research done and uh, if there is uh, any uh, published uh, papers about it, then I would try to ask my uh, colleagues who actually work uh, in the same area and see. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes we have also uh, meetings, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we describe our problems in a meeting and uh, people even from different uh, background, they might have some suggestion that helps you to uh, go out of that uh, dead end. Uh, so uh, basically I will try to uh, first uh, repeat and see what, what was wrong and then if if uh, that's really a dead end, I will try to uh, like move a little bit and find another way to just solve the issue. Oh, uh, I think that's why you call it research. So you search and then you research again. It's uh, a constant process of stopping and starting again. So this is a daily occurrence to get stuck in a dead end and then to trying to work yourself out of the dead end. What kind of obstacles do you face in your research and what do you do to overcome them? We reflect on them and Sometimes you talk to people who are either more experienced than you or who knows better or who've been in the same situation. Sometimes you just realize that you are taking the wrong direction and you just have to give it up and then maybe look for another road, I guess. Coming from a developing nation, the major problem has always been um, funding, research funding and also um, availability of um, equipments to carry out um, detailed analysis or detailed research. And what I do most times is to um, search for research grants, apply, come, you know, you have to compete with other researchers in the world. And also I try to um, collaborate with other researchers in other parts of the world, as well as looking inward in Africa to collaborate with my colleagues. I think that the biggest challenge is the distrust that comes from citizens, that they don't 
trust science and I would like to say that um, science, the scientific method is a very well proof method. If I want to publish something, uh, my research is going to go to other researchers and these researchers are going to say what's good and bad about it. Then it comes back to me and then I have to fix all these errors and then again it goes to these researchers and then they have to say that they, they approve or not. Once that they approve and then they think that all the errors have been fixed, then this publication goes into the public. So I think that's the best way that we can have facts and, and science being good for our society. In my daily research, daily life research, one of the biggest issues we we face is the availability of the data as well as the adaptation of computational methods.